When I left you five years ago, you gave me everything you could afford, and all you thought would be necessary for me. But one trifle you forgot, which was the certificate of my birth from the church book. You know, in this country, there was nothing to be done without it. I became tired of a soldier's life, and, in the hope I should obtain my discharge, offered myself to a master to learn a profession. But his question was, where is the certificate from the church book of the parish in which you were born? My captain gave me leave to come home to fetch it, and you see, mother, here I am. <gasps> oh! What is the matter? <laughs> For heaven's sake, mother, tell me, what is the matter? You have no certificate. No! No! The laws of Germany excluded you from being registered at your birth for you. Or a natural son. <gasps> so... And who is my father? Oh, Frederick, your wild looks are daggers to my heart. Another time. No, no. You are still my mother, and I am still your son. But tell me, who is my father? I will. I will, but you must not look at me. Not look at you? Cursed be that son who could find his mother guilty, although the world should call her so. <laughs> then listen to me, and to take notice of that village, <laughs> of that castle, and of that church. In that village I was born, in that church I was baptized. My parents were poor but reputable farmers. The lady of that castle and estate requested them to let me live with her and she would provide for me through life. They resigned me, and at the age of 14, I went to my patroness, and three happy years had passed under protection when her only son, who was an officer, obtained permission to come home. <laughs> I had never seen him before. Oh, he was a handsome young man, in my eyes a prodigy. For he talked of love and offered me marriage. Oh, he was the first man who had ever spoke to me on such a subject. His flattery made me vain, and his repeated vow. Oh, don't look at me, Frederick! I can say no more! Go on. Let me know more of my father. <laughs> when the time grew near, that I could no longer hide my guilt and shame. My seducer prevailed upon me not to expose him to the resentment of his mother. He repeated his former vows of marriage at her death, on which relying I gave him my word to be secret. And I have to this hour buried his name deep in my heart. Proceed, proceed. Give me for information. I will have courage to hear it all. His leave of absence expired. He returned to his regiment, depending on my promise, and well assured of my esteem. As soon as my situation became known, I was questioned, but I refused to confess who was my undoer. And for that obstinacy, he was turned from the castle. I went to my parents, but their door was shut against me. Be quick with your narrative or you'll break my heart. I now sought protection from the old clergyman of the parish. He received me with compassion. Through his recommendation, I went to town, and there procured the means of subsistence by teaching to the neighboring children what I had learned under the tuition of my benefactress. Oh, to teach you and instruct you, my Frederick, was my care and delight. And in return for your filial love, I would not thwart your wishes when they led to a soldier's life. But my health failed. I was compelled to give up my employment. And by degrees became the object you now see me. Frederick, you may look at me 